In this video, we're going to solve two-step equations, okay? So in a two-step equation, it's very similar to a one-step equation. You, the, you ask yourself the question, what is happening to my unknown, okay? Except this time, two things are happening to the unknown. And you have to think about your order of operations. And by order of operations, I'm talking about the thing that we call gemdas or gemdas, okay? First, you look at groups. Then you look at exponents. Then you look at multiplication and division. Neither one outranks the other, so you just go left to right. Then you look at addition and subtraction. Okay? So what is happening to z here? The first thing happening to z is it's being multiplied by 4. The second thing happening to z is it's being added. Uh, you're adding 19 to it. Okay? So times 4 is the first thing, and then plus 19 is the second thing. Now, think for a second. When you're, when you're undoing a two-step process. What do you do? You undo the steps, but you go in reverse order. Thinking about, think about putting on your socks and shoes. First you put on your socks, then you put on your shoes, then you go run around and do whatever you want to do. You come home, and when you undo the process, when you take them on, when you take them off, you don't take off your socks first. You take off your shoes first, okay? You basically go backwards in your, uh, uh, in your steps. So what we're going to do here is we're going to undo the plus 19 first, then we'll undo the times 4. And in both cases, whatever we do to, our left, to the left side of our equation, we must also do to the right side of our equation. So let's start by undoing the plus 19 by subtracting 19 from both sides of our equation. Okay? 4z plus 19 minus 19 is just 4z. 7 minus 19, okay, hang on for a second, let's see. We've got a little number minus a big number, and that gives us a negative number, okay? And negative what? Well, let's think. 19 minus 7 is 12, so that means this is going to be negative 12. 4 times a number equals negative 12, okay? So I've made this a little simpler problem now, now it's just a one-step problem. Uh, it's times 4, so what do we do? We do the inverse operation. We divide by 4. And this gives us z equals negative 12 divided by 4, which is negative 3. Well, let's see. Is that really true? Uh, if I were to replace z with negative 3 here, I would get negative 12. And negative 12 plus 19 is like saying 19 minus 12, which is 7. Yes, that works. Let's look at another one. This time we have 6 times, in parentheses, x minus 7 equals 21. So we ask ourselves, what's happening to our unknown? First thing happening to the unknown is we're subtracting 7, minus 7. The second thing happening after we subtract 7 is we multiply by 6. Okay? Now, why is that true? Again, remember your order of operations. When you have a group like this with the parentheses, you do whatever's in that group first then you do the stuff on the outside of the group. So in order to undo this process, we have to undo the second step first. And the way that you undo times 6 is you divide by 6. Uh, alternatively, we could also multiply by 1 6, the reciprocal of 6. Okay, so now that we have this, we see that we have 6 and 6. We can easily simplify that, and uh, those simplify to 1 over 1. So we're left with x minus 7 on our left, and on the right side of our equation, we have 21 divided by 6. And let's see, 21 divided by 6, this would just be, they're both multiples of 3, so I could call this 7 over 2. And 7 over 2, I recognize that to be 3.5. Okay? Now I have x minus 7 equals 3.5. I think I know what to do. I have a minus 7. That means I'm going to undo this by adding 7 to it. Careful when you're adding 7 here, you have the decimal point, so let's put that 7 right there, not under the 5. And I get x minus 7 plus 7, which is simply x, and over here I have 3.5 plus 7, which is 10.5. Don't forget the equal sign. x equals 10.5. Is it true? Well, I don't know. Let's see. Let's take this 10.5, uh, replace x with 10.5 in our original equation, and 10.5 minus 7 uh, gives us 3.5, and 6 times 3.5, uh, let's see, it's going to be 30, uh, 18 plus the 3 is 21, 0, that's exactly what I was looking for here, 21, so yes, 
that also works. Let's look at one more problem here. Now, this one is deceptively, I was about to say deceptively simple. Actually, that it's the exact opposite. It's, de it's deceptively complicated. This is actually a two-step problem, whereas most people would look at this and think it's a one-step problem because they say, only one thing's happening, 12 minus y. Actually, two things are happening because you don't want to ask what's happening to 12. We don't care. We want to know what's happening to y, our unknown. And what's happening to y is, the first thing that's happening to it is it's being multiplied by negative 1 because saying minus y is like saying plus negative y. Okay, remember, minus and plus negative are the exact same thing. They're equivalent expressions. So the first thing that's happening to y is we're multiplying it by negative 1. The second thing happening to y is we're adding 12. Okay? So let's go back to how it was originally written. 12 minus y equals negative 3. Many people would say, oh, since it's subtraction, the first thing you're going to do to solve this would be add. Well... That's the, you can solve it that way. You're going to make a little longer problem, though. So instead of adding, let's undo this step here. Let's subtract 12 from both sides of our equation. 12 minus 12 is 0, and I get 0 minus y, which means I get negative y. So if you have a minus there, don't lose that. It turns into a negative. Negative 3 minus 12. Uh, let me think about this. Um, if this is a 0, negative 3 is going to be on this side, and then minus 12 means 12 more, so I get 3 and 12, and that's going to be negative 15. Sorry, I just like doing it on the number line. It makes it easier for me. So I end up with negative y equals negative 15. Now I need to undo this times negative 1 step, and you can think of this as either multiplying by negative 1 or dividing by negative 1. It's the same thing. But if I multiply negative y times negative 1, I get y. If I multiply negative 15 times negative 1, I get 15. And so y equals 15. This one is incredibly easy to uh, check. Take this, replace y with 15, and I get 12 minus 15, and I know that to be negative 3, so yes, this works.